All right, I'm Tyler and welcome back to the Cigar Experience Review. We are getting into the Espinosa Laranja Escuro uh, Reserva Escuro, excuse me. And so uh, this is the uh, Corona Larga, I believe is what it's called. So it's a six inch by 40, eight ring gauge so it's a little small guy but it is a box press see that square there so we are getting into it so uh, I have never had this cigar before we are gonna do this one live and so uh, I'm excited let's get into it all right welcome back so again we are talking about the Laranja and uh, from Espinosa now I reached out to my buddy Tommy over at Nickel City Cigars and one of the things that I was like hey uh, I need to try something new that I've never tried before and I've tried a bunch of Roma craft before and I've tried crowned heads I've done Tatawahe I've done I mean United I've done a ton of their stuff I have not done a ton of the Espinosa and so um, this was the perfect one I love an Escuro real dark real rich flavors um, Typically, there's going to be like a, some sort of like coffee espresso notes in there. That's that's typically what I get out of that. So I'm pumped, but I've never had it before. So uh, we have a uh, really oily. I mean, it's just really dark. I mean, we're talking like a dark chocolate brown. It's almost like marbly. In fact, it, yeah, I don't even know if you can see that, but like it is. It is this color here versus this color here versus this color here. It is. It is kind of just tripping me out so it is it is really pretty uh, it is a triple cap so we've got one there one there and one there um, like I said it is a box press so we've got that square uh, it's got some corners on it uh, it's a light box so it's not super sharp but it definitely does have that box press feel so when a cigar is rolled um, to do in a box press because they've got to put these corners in there is rolled a little bit less tight it's not so tight in there so it allows for the, the actual cigar to be formed and molded uh, into a square I dig them I like a box press all day so uh, we're gonna get a little cut into this one might say hey how do you cut a square right you could totally do the V cut um, and just cut right through the middle there um, do a guillotine do the same thing do a straight edge um, I'm going back to my favorite and we're doing the V cut, deep V. So I'm just going to put that right in there, get it lined up, and we're just going to commit to it. And that opened it up really, really well done right there. So I don't know if you can see that, get that a little closer. Just see how it opens. Anyway. Um, so it's got a uh, foot band on it. We're gonna take that off. We're gonna get this thing lit up and uh, we'll see you on light up. All right, we're back. So um, like I mentioned before, I have not done a ton of Espinosa yet. I've had a couple of theirs, um, liked them so far, but uh, as we get into cigars, you realize that some cigars are phenomenal and uh, that same brand might have a dud and might have a flop. So, um, with the exception of a couple of companies that have just never let me down, I don't typically say one one company does all perfect cigars. Uh, you guys know I'm a f fan of Crowned Heads. Uh, not everything that Crowned Heads does is perfect for my palate. So I've got a couple that I have tried I like, but. I don't really go back to them and so just because I had two or three good Espinosa in the past doesn't mean that this one's gonna be a winner so we got to judge them all we got a trial and error we got to get after it so let's get after this one so uh, on light up Wow okay so a lot of flavor right out of the gate. Creamy, cocoa, espresso. Uh, there's some barnyard in there. Um, 
I didn't even put it on the on the video. I should have, but I did a I did a uh, nose before I lit it, and I had some of that kind of uh, dried fruit to it. Uh, I'm still getting a little bit of that dried fruit now. Pepper. Gosh dang. Um, creamy, peppery, really a lot of flavor without any harsh bitter note. Um, I was expecting a little bit more pepper, but I'm not mad at it at all. I mean, it's good, it's there, especially on the retrohale, but uh, it's not a pepper bomb at all. Toothy, somewhat toothy, not, not a, not, not super toothy. Toothy, really good, oily finish, dark, good flavor, pepper, cocoa, espresso. There's almost like a, there's almost like a caramel, like a caramel, a little bit of that caramel sweetness in there. And then on the retro hill, I do get that pepper, but I, I get a little bit of uh, like a citrus, a little bit of zing, a little bit of uh, like an orange zest in there. Just a touch, not a ton. All right, it's off to a good start. Check in at the first third. Into the first third. Construction is ruler straight. Look at that burn. Solid, perfect. Ash is real white, flaky. Um, I did have uh, somebody reach out to me and ask, but you know, is the ash indicative of anything? Um, I know that when uh, I've had cigars that <clears throat> were poorly wrapped, or just maybe they're brand new company, they're they're smaller. They've got a real light, flaky ash, and it doesn't hold on very well. It just means it's kind of younger. Uh, I don't know if it necessarily means like Espinosa is like the champion because they've got a solid inch. It's probably gonna fall off in a minute here. Um, I know that a lot of people like to show like you know they've smoked it this way and they've got like six inches worth of ash, and that's fine. I don't think you really need anything more than about an inch. Um, I had a buddy at work who was asking me about, you know, do you, at what point do you tap the ash? And I, I typically never do, uh, unless I know that it's, it's, I mean, it's holding on, but it's about to fall in my lap, then I'm gonna tap the ash. Um, but I like to see how far it goes. Um, I'm, but I'm not one of those that taps it every four minutes just to kind of keep it fresh. The ash actually does a, a service. It protects the cherry and keeps it kind of away from the elements, away from the wind. So I, I would say, you know, to each his own. If you like to have no ash on the end, great. If you like to tap that, that's fine. Go ahead, no big deal, no judgment. Uh, makeup of this thing. All right, so the binder, sorry, we'll start with the wrapper. It's Brazilian Matafina. A Brazilian beautiful wrapper is amazing. And then the binder and fillers are both Nicaraguan. So it's a Nicaraguan filler binder and then Brazilian Mata Fina um, wrapper. So, uh, so far, man, I am still great smoke output. I'm getting all those flavors. The pepper actually went down a little bit. I don't get that a ton. I'm still getting that orange zest. Still getting that cocoa. I'm still getting that espresso. Tons of just, it, it's creamy. Like, if you have a really good dark espresso slash cocoa cigar, sometimes it also brings upon that like black coffee bitterness. It's bold, it's in your face, it's really rich flavor, but it's got that coffee bitterness. This doesn't have any of that. It's got like I said, I feel like there's, it, it. I get a caramel sweetness to it. It's like a, it's more like a 
caramel macchiato kind of thing. Like it's rich, it's creamy, it's caramely, it's cocoa, espresso. Like there's just this really great blend of flavors here. So uh, I'm gonna keep going. We'll check in on the second third. All right, in the second third, and of course, right after I cut camera the last time, Ash just fell right in my lap, which we just talked about that, which is kind of funny. So uh, in the second third, I'm still getting those uh, espresso notes, still getting that creamy note. It's The flavor hasn't dropped hardly at all. The only thing that I would say, um, I'm not getting any of that like citrus, orange peel, zest anymore. I'm not getting any of that anymore, but uh, still really, really good smoke output. Um, I mean, the ash is holding on, right? And the burn is just perfect. So the construction hasn't changed. I mean, it's been perfect the entire time. Um, but if I were to, like, it, it was easy, right? So it's not super packed. Um, and that's that's kind of, we talked about that before, the, the box press has got a, uh, there's a little bit of give to it. It's a little bit of a light, um, light pack. It, I wouldn't say it's uh, very firm at all. Um, but still good flavor, still good smoke. We're going to get after it, and uh, we'll bring into that final third. Okay, burn is perfect still. Uh, final notes on this one, really still a good amount of flavor. Still getting that pepper on the retrohale, still getting the pepper, still getting that caramel, still getting that cocoa and espresso notes. Um, in the beginning, there was a lot more flavor, um, but not, it's, it's come down it has not died out. I would say if anything, that orange that orange peel is gone. I don't get that a ton anymore. Uh, but it is it's performing extraordinarily well. Uh, it, easy smoke. Um, honestly, so here's here's what I would recommend for this one. So um, great cigar, Espinosa, well done. Um, I would say if you are looking to, I really want to get into a darker more robust flavor. I've done some good, um, uh, you know, I've had my fair share of Connecticut's and I've had my fair share of Habanos and I'm really like, I'm, I'm wanting to improve my game a little bit. I'm wanting to step up my game, enjoy a really good dark cigar without getting that punched in the head, bell ringing, super tobacco, like, ooh, it's too much. You know, that's the thing that a lot of people don't love about that uh, getting into a super dark cigar early on is there's there's a lot of flavor, but there is a lot of nicotine, and it will ring your bell if you're not prepared for it. Um, uh, yeah, some tricks to that, obviously make sure you've eaten in the last couple hours, that's helpful. Um, a lot of people get kind of an upset stomach if they smoke something too dark on an empty stomach. Um, I'm, I'm always a fan of, you know, I always, I always have a little bit of water wherever I go. I'm always, you know, drinking a little bit of, um, Topo Chico, a little mineral water or something like that. That's that's typically a go-to for me. Um, but I know a lot of guys that love to have a good bourbon, a good whiskey. Um, you know, I, I know a lot of couples that they'll do a, a cigar and a red wine, and that goes really well together. So um, you know, there's a lot of options there. This is a really good cigar for someone who wants to say, I want to try something darker. I want to try something a little bit more robust, and I'm a little nervous but I'm ready to set my game up, this is what I'd recommend. This is a great, super dark, super rich, flavorful cigar um, without without having a ton of bitter, um, you know, just, it's not too much, is, is I guess the phrase there. So, um, Espinosa, well done. Uh, I got mine from Nickel City Cigars. That's my, that's, those are my guys, that's where I get my cigars from. Um, if you want to get a couple of cigars from them, you can put Honest in the checkout and you'll get 10% off your order. And so uh, give them a shot, swing them, swing by there, pick up a couple sticks. Um, you know, the, the Poshanya or Paustini, uh, but the Poshanya that I did last time, that's also over at Nickel City Cigars as well. They've got a great lineup. Um, and again, put Honest in the checkout and you will get 10% off your order. So um, at the end of the day, I am a fan. I will do this again in a heartbeat. Um, I would I would definitely recommend uh, buying 10, get a box. Uh, these are great cigars to have if you're wanting to try something new, try something dark, try something with good flavor. So, all right, y'all. Uh, 
We didn't have a question of the day this time. That's okay. Just tell me something cool about yourself. Something that you do that none of your friends do. Tell you something that defines you. Maybe you, um, yeah, question of the day. What's something super rad that's just super rare? Uh, I'll tell you a weird, weird story about me. I'll show you maybe next time, but I have a rock in my arm. I actually like, I can feel it right there. Uh, I have a rock in my arm. That's my, that's my weird thing. Um, tell me something that's super weird about you. Maybe you, uh, maybe you drive, you ride Harley Davidson on the week and then you uh, do crocheting in the weekend. I don't know, whatever. Just something that's, that's you, that's super weird, super rare. Um, beyond that, we'll see you in the next review. Peace.